tried to pull this vehicle over once they realized that the plates came back to a stolen car, but the driver of the car failed to yield and the pursuit was on, taking us all the way from South Los Angeles over towards the Orange Crush in the city of Orange and Santa Ana before uh, we made a U-turn on the northbound 5 freeway and he just made that transition onto the westbound 91. High speeds, as you can see, almost 100 miles an hour. And at this point, believed to just be the male driver in the vehicle. And there are times when I can kind of get a little gl a glimpse of him inside. And I don't see anyone in the passenger seat. So it does appear that this is a single occupant only and the California Highway Patrol in pursuit. And for a time, this was a tracking pursuit, which means that there were no units directly behind him. All right, go ahead, Booth, I gotcha. Hey, right, copy that. And for everyone online, we're actually going to break into programming right now on NBC. Chuck and Carolyn, this is a pursuit of a possible stolen vehicle that is now on the westbound 91 freeway in the Cerritos area. So we're not far from the 605 freeway. And this was originally an LA County Sheriff's Department pursuit in the South LA area. So uh, deputies from the uh, Sheriff's Division out in South LA spotted this car. They ran the plates. It came back as a stolen. They tried to pull the driver over, but the driver failed to yield and the pursuit was on, taking us as far south as Orange County. We went all the way to the Orange Crush where the 22, the 57, and the 5 meet. And that is where the driver made the transition onto the northbound 5 and now onto the westbound 91 freeway. At this point, it appears that it's just the single solo male driver. I was able to look inside uh, via the front window, and I couldn't see any passenger inside of this truck. So at this point, we're going with just one male occupant. And as far as whether he is armed, that is unclear at this time. I believe that Sheriff's uh, Department uh, personnel really know uh, very little about this individual because the, all they had were the plates. They ran the plates, came back as a stolen. They tried to pull the guy over, but he didn't stop. And he was driving so recklessly that sheriff's deputies actually backed off completely. They went into surveillance mode, which means it was helicopter only until they were able to get units from the California Highway Patrol behind the vehicle. Yeah, so fast. We've seen speeds, as you said, about 100 miles an hour. Right now he's in the carpool lane, uh, but we have s seen him in the slow lane before, so he's really not afraid to move all over the freeway if necessary. But I'm going to widen out the shot just a touch. I want you to see some of those units that are directly behind this guy. I counted at least three of them earlier. Let's see if additional units have joined in, but nope. It looks like it's still uh, just three units of the California Highway Patrol behind this vehicle, as well as the uh, police helicopter overhead. Yeah, the entire time that we've heard the pursuit, actually, he's been on the freeway. So as soon as we took off from Whiteman Airport, we heard he was on the eastbound 105 freeway, uh, roughly near the 710, and made, as I said before, made his way all the way into Orange County using freeways, but now he's headed back essentially the, the way that he came. So now he's westbound on the 91, headed back towards that South LA area. And just from covering pursuits, we know people tend to return to an area that is familiar to them, so I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up somewhere in South LA. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, he didn't trick them, that's for sure. And it looks like he's um, perhaps making the transition here onto the eastbound 91 or the 605. So we'll see as soon as he completes that transition. But it looks like he may be going eastbound on the 91 now. So from the... Um, um, 
from the westbound uh, 91. Actually, let me see as he completes this transition because it looks like he actually is southbound 605. Yeah, so I'm looking out the window right now. Um, I got confused there at the uh, intersection of the two freeways, but it does look like he's going south on the 605, and he's been on this freeway before. He took the south 605 all the way down to the 405 where he picked up the 405 south to the 22 west, and that's, or 22 east rather, and that is actually how we ended up at the Orange Crush. So this individual may be just making one big old circle here uh, now in the Cerritos area. Yeah, it's essentially, yeah, one big loop uh, south on the 605. Uh, so once we get to the 405, we'll see if he does 405 south yet again or if he changes things up and goes north. Uh, but uh, again, uh, southbound on the 605. I'm just looking out the window. I wanted to see what traffic is looking like, and it looks like it is smooth sailing as far as the eye can see here on the southbound 605. Yeah, it looks like he was trying to avoid a slower moving vehicle, uh, but I'm going to quickly move up ahead and make sure that there's no one ahead of him. And nope, so he's he's going to be good to stay in this carpool lane uh, for quite some time. And the 605 freeway will end at the 405, so that's when he's going to have to start making some choices, uh, whether he exits up onto surface streets from there or uh, proceeds onto the 405 freeway. Uh, but again, this is was originally a pursuit from the LA County Sheriff's Department of a stolen vehicle, an older model white pickup with uh, what we believe to just be one male driver behind the wheel and now the California Highway Patrol in pursuit. Yeah, let me take a quick look because it definitely does look like somebody was using it as a work van. I can see a couple things in there, maybe clothing of some sort. So I'm going to widen out the shot just for a moment as the car comes out, uh, under us because we uh, don't want to lose it. So we're going to let it just uh, come out ahead of us. But let me tell you where we're at. Uh, we're essentially uh, near the Long Beach Town Center on the southbound 605 approaching Carson Street. So we're also not far from the Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Uh, and normally, uh, this time of the day, this uh, 605 freeway, it's usually wide open in both directions until you get up to about the uh, 105 if you're headed north. On the southbound side, it's usually smooth sailing until you get to the 405. Yeah, he's not giving him too much room. I'd say maybe an eighth of a mile at most. And again, for a time, he was driving so recklessly that uh, the sheriff's department went into surveillance mode. They had the units back up, and they were helicopter only until the California Highway Patrol was able to get behind the car. And the reason for that is the California Highway Patrol is essentially the police of our freeway system. So whenever a chase is on the highway, it just makes sense to let them uh, take over the pursuit because as they move into different areas of the state, different units from the California Highway Patrol can take over. So right now we're actually, uh, these would be the Westminster units of the uh, California Highway Patrol. Yeah, you really can't. And, and your vehicles of this size would normally have a, a governor that would limit the speeds. Uh, but based off of the speeds that we've seen, I don't believe that this has anything limiting it whatsoever because we've seen speeds uh, upwards of 100 miles an hour. But as you said, this is an older car. It's not going to be able to take up uh, driving at these speeds for that much longer. Yeah, exactly. So we're at the 405. So we'll see if he goes north or south. It, it, and he may actually be exiting, too, because he has that option. Uh, but earlier, his choice was to do the southbound 405. So we'll see what he does here. Uh, this, of course, is also where the 22 
uh, freeway comes to an end, um, and that will take you into Long Beach. So we'll see if perhaps this does take us into Long Beach. And if that's the case, then Long Beach police can actually take over the pursuit if the California Highway Patrol relinquishes the pursuit to them. But it does, in fact, look like he's getting on the westbound 22 uh, from the 605, so entering Long Beach. Yeah, yeah, it really doesn't uh, go uh, very long before it does come to an end. It ends at 7th Street, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Thank you. Copy that, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, so coming up to the light here on 7th Street, and I was just getting some information. Yeah, blew right through. Wow. Uh, this is near the Veterans uh, Hospital here in Long Beach. Uh, and uh, I was just getting some information from uh, Kevin at our assignment desk. Uh, he's telling me that the Sheriff's Department believes that there's two people in the vehicle. Uh, so even though I can't see that second person, uh, at this point they're going with the uh, understanding that there may be two people in the car. Yeah, it appeared to be clothing of some sort uh, all up against the uh, corner there. Uh, but we're uh, on 7th Street coming up to a light here. He has the green, fortunately, but he's also got a lot of traffic. So let's see what he does. He's in the bike lane, folks. This is so dangerous uh, because uh, we could have bicyclists here. The, and there, of course, could be pedestrians uh, crossing the street as well. So it always makes me so nervous when we get pursuits back on surface streets because that's when you put pedestrians back in the mix. And that could really make things more dangerous. Yeah, very busy area. There's lots of little shops along uh, 7th Street as well. Um, you can see what it's done to his speeds, really knocked them down uh, because he simply can't go any faster. It's just too busy of an area as he comes up to PCH here on 7th Street. Yeah, I can't see him either, but it could be a situation where they're... Oh, cross traffic here. Okay, so he's going the wrong way. Oh, wrong way here. Oh, fortunately, moved over just in time before he collided with any other vehicles. And now he's uh, on uh, Pacific Coast Highway and Los Altos, I believe. And Oh, making a U-turn here. Yeah, so making a U-turn here, it's unclear to me if he is familiar with this area or not, or if he's just uh, making every random turn that he can just to try to lose the officers behind him. Uh, but again, we're uh, in Long Beach. Uh, we're in a residential area, as you can see here, on 8th Street. Oh, door opening. Oh, there are two people. And they're jumping. And uh, the driver is the man in the red pants. His passenger is the one there uh, in the black uh, sweatshirt and hat. And they're running uh, together here uh, through what appears to be a park on Santiago Avenue and 8th Street in Long Beach. Uh, but they're wide in the, they're in the wide open here uh, with the sheriff's helicopter overhead. And I just saw one of them drop something, perhaps a cell phone. Uh, but they're uh, running essentially here with uh, all they can as they run through this lot. And I don't know where the nearest units are right now. But as I widen out the shot, we'll be able to hopefully see some units close by. Yeah, they're running out of steam here. As I widen out the shot, you're going to see that uh, they've still got a long ways to go. It's a golf course. Yeah, so it is a golf course. There's the sheriff's helicopter overhead. They, they've got no chance of getting away from him. Uh, he can clearly see where they're at. Yeah, he's definitely tired after running... Uh, what I would describe maybe as a quarter mile, half a mile roughly, just to get this far into the uh, golf course here. Uh, but again, we're in Long Beach, and uh, these guys clearly stand out with uh, those red pants and uh, just completely winded. Uh, and you see the sheriff's helicopter overhead. You see all the gol golf carts there from uh, all the people who were out here enjoying a nice day of golf until uh, this pursuit literally fell right in their lap. And now these uh, two folks pretending like uh, nothing happened.
Yeah, exactly. And I, the sheriff's helicopter is giving the ground units the exact location of these two individuals. So they're getting uh, units in a place uh, and they want to make sure that those units are also paired up so that in case one of these individuals happens to be uh, armed in any way, they will have plenty of officers to respond to that. But you see the people here. They were just out here enjoying a day of golf and all of this commotion uh, literally fell right into their laps here, uh, here in Long Beach. Oh yeah, they definitely do. Uh, they have the bullhorn, so they're able to make announcements uh, to these individuals to let them know to uh, essentially just lay down on the ground and surrender and wait for the units to arrive on scene. But they're just casually walking away as if they had nothing to do with any of this. Uh, but I'm gonna try to widen out real quick uh, since I know that they're on the pathway there and they're gonna stay there, I, I'm assuming. Uh, just so, yeah, there's the helicopter right over there. I wanna see if where the nearest units are. Looks like that's the parking lot over there. There's a, oh, so my uh, pilot Saro says he sees uh, an officer on his bicycle, that, or a motorcycle rather, uh, that is approaching uh, the two individuals now and they're putting their hands up. And as we work our way around the tree, you're gonna see that these two men are now down on the ground, proned out and being taken into custody. I believe this may be the one uh, uh, near the uh, Navy uh, base over here, but I'll try to get you the exact address. But uh, we're definitely in Long Beach, uh, just off of 7th Street. And here's, I believe that's an additional officer pulling up right now in a, in a golf cart. And the sheriff's helicopter landed here as well so that the observer of the uh, helicopter could get out and assist with the arrest. So uh, he's the uh, gentleman there that you see in the white helmet, uh, but you've got the motor officer, and then you've got the additional officer who came via golf cart, uh, which I never thought I would say, uh, but uh, they are now taking these two individuals into custody. And we also happen to be right next to a dog park, uh, which is uh, the, that dry field that you see there. Uh, they could, just depending on how far the walk is. But uh, if I went out the shot, I think I noticed that there was a, a parking lot right up ahead, right here. So I'm sure they'll have uh, the units uh, come over here and, and just have these two individuals walk over to the parking lot. Yeah, let's see what happens. I think it's about to happen, so we'll see. I think, he, yeah. <laughs> A good Samaritan there loaned his uh, golf cart. <laughs> oh, and uh, and we're actually hearing, uh, my pilot Saro is telling me that the airship is telling him that one of these two individuals tossed a gun while they were running. So that was the item that we saw fall out. Yeah, so this is Long Beach Police. Uh, since this is their jurisdiction, uh, their units are here and uh, we'll be taking these two individuals back to the station. Thanks, Boo. Oh, what the, oh yeah. Cool. Let me get the um, name of the golf course. Because I know there's one over here next to the uh, Navy base, but 
So this is that Federation and, oh, Duke Majian. Okay. Um, so Desk, if I've got you on microwave, uh, here's the streets if you want to write them down. Uh, Duke Majian and Federation. The nearest cross to where they were taken into custody. Uh, 